How you going folks? It's a beautiful day outside and right now we're kicking into fishing and sort of in between seasons really doing a bit of hunting but more fishing right now because they're out in the bay which ponders the thought that we're actually allowed to fish during the time they're spawning. I caught a snapper yesterday and it's full of roe which I ate but I wonder why we're allowed to fish when they're spawning. It doesn't make sense to me that. But anyway this is a, a box opening and a well overdue box opening for stuff that's come in and I also haven't got around to updating the good basses club board. So if you're a patron and you're uh, paying over 20 bucks then you're instantly on that board but I just haven't written it down because it's just too much going on. Nice. Okay Ross Johnston who was a very well known, still is actually, in Nelson here. He lives uh, over the upper motory way. He used to make knives for years and sell them at the market and I used to love his work and he popped into my house the other day and dropped this beauty off. I took a young fella out and he stuck a pig with it and it went like a dream but it's a fantastic knife but it looks a bit different so uh, he gave me a sheath for it he also dropped off this Japanese, I think it's actually a Chinese knife which I've been using in the kitchen to try out but anyway this knife here I'm going to gift to a young fella at some stage and this one's going to stay in my kitchen thanks a lot Ross okay uh, Simon is working on our prototype well he's finished the prototype this is the original one here uh, it's a stick knife, it's a field knife. Mate, I've been using it for everything, Simon. It's been bloody good. I actually filleted a snapper today and made sashimi out of it. So we had this sheath which just wasn't working for me in the scrub. It was sticking out too much and getting caught on shit. And we've gone to this design here, made to accompany these knives. So here's four made. I haven't heard anything back from them, so I haven't got a price for you. I'm not actually selling them, the, uh, the POM selling them. And any money that comes out of that will go to a fund to fly the POM over here to New Zealand so we can go fishing with him and uh, do something for him being such a good bastard running all the behind the scenes stuff. Heaps of stuff to open up. This I believe came from Scott Wilson. I'm afraid to cut it with a knife because I believe there's some, I'll just tear into it with the fingers, some hand I think, oh this looks great. There's a letter. Clay, wife spent an hour or two making you a nice pair of socks, now summer is coming, and we've chucked in a nice handmade rabbit skinner, alright, I had a spare made by a buddy in Florida, it's inside the sock I guess, uh, all the best, Scott Wilson, <laughs> the one that shoots the HMR17, he's bloody good with it, hey Scott, and to your missus mate, awesome. Seriously, dude. That's, that's a real talent to make something like that. These look really awesome. They're going to be probably a bit warm for summer, but next winter they'll be the bizzo. Actually, we're still having some cold days, so I probably will wear them. I want to check out this rabbit skin that's inside here. Is it sharp? Oh, mate. Check this out. Look at the wee sheath it's in. Oh, I see that. Oh, I got it. Okay. Got to loosen this off. That's made by a bit of, isn't that a cool idea? Look, it's got a wee thing to hold the knife in. It's a little bit of dairy, and I haven't seen that before. A little rabbit skinner. Oh, dude, thank you. Sharp as. Well, mate, that is just bloody brilliant. It's a handy wee knife. I love the sheath. Who made that? Did you make that? Or was that also your mate in Florida? If it is, tell him thank you from me. It's a nice bit of kit, and it's got a wee thing to go on the belt. I'm going to use that. Beauty. So that's knives. And please, again, thank your lady for making these. Awesome. Right, this comes from good bastard Hamish Hurst. Now, Hamish, oh, I need a knife. I'm going to use the little rabbit knife for this. Hamish has already sent me a box of ammo. I've been taking young fellas out to the rifle range. Uh, last week we took out Smash and Cuzzy. There's a letter here, and there's a cash check in here for 100 bucks. Hello old bastard. Easy on the old there mate, I am old enough to be his dad. Me and myself and the gun club I belong to, have got some ammunition for you, check it out guys. 
This is the second lot he sent. This is what we're actually using with the guys on the rifle range or the young fellas. It's good for a number of reasons. We use a 22 because it stops them flinching. It's a good gun to start with. We're trying to get them to not shut their eye when they're shooting. A lot of people do this. This is a good light ammo to start with. We've already fired off like three boxes already, so this is great to have. Um, anyway, yeah, I've enclosed. So thanks to you guys for that. Well, I've enclosed a cheque for 100 bucks. So anyway, basically this guy, a mate of ours, Sheldon, who's a uh, game guide, had a client that wanted to go out and get something, and Hamish took him out in the shitty weather. The guy gave him 100 bucks, and he has passed that on to the Good Bastards Club. Okay, that is going to go on fuel and lunches for the boys out at the rifle range. And uh, it's much appreciated. Thank you very much, Hamish. You are a true good bastard. Right, don't lose that. Wicked. Always get amazed at what people send me and what they do. Ezra Hansen, serious good bastard who's had some real health issues lately. And like I said, Ezra, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. He sent me out to, uh, I don't know what it is. Oh mate, smoky barbecue flavour, so you can cook something in the pan, like a bit of venison or steak, and whack some of that on. Awesome bro. So Ezra's just had an operation, he's recovering, and he's uh, already getting back up and fighting the good battle, as I see he's done a vlog or two. What have we got in here? Oh this is for Dayla. Happy birthday. Okay, I won't open that, that's for my daughter who's just turned 16. You're a good bastard, man. Last time he gave her a beautiful knife. Now she's got this. Oh, mate. Too much, bro. Okay. We're tearing through the stuff. This here came from Australia. From Alan Rogers. Aussie tracking repairs. I don't know what's in here, but it feels like sort of a hat or something, but I don't really know. Your mate Joe said he was going to organise something for us. Joe who's on the Good Bastards board, that's uh, Joe Boyle, I don't know if that was his mates or... There's so many names, but... Uh, let's see what we've got in here. Oh, serious? Oh, mate! These are antennas. These are for our, our tracking collars, man. These are new ones, dude! Oh, far out, man. These, like, this is just so good to have. Would you check it out? Oh, mate, that is too much, man. These are for our, our trackers. These are aerials, spear aerials. I got a, uh, <laughs> get, the, get the old goosebumps of just like the generosity of people. This came from Aussie Tracker Repairs. So if you're an Aussie, make sure you use those guys, because they've helped us out. Aussie Tracker appears, and uh, here's his sticker, which will be going on the truck. Can that focus or not? See that? We'll go back a bit. Is that focusing? I'm going to touch the camera so it focuses on it. There we go. Too much, bro. Oh, he's got his business card here. I'm going to show the business card as well, so you can take a screenshot of this. So we've got two here. Got um, this one here with his details. So if you want to get any stuff from these guys, yeah, screenshot. And details here too. And also, uh, I guess this is a mate of his, or he might run it too, I don't know. But um, this is something, uh, well, I guess it is him, because it says contact Al or Jackie. Uh, so he's doing um, fishing and hunting adventures. Who wouldn't want to go on one of those? Now this is up at Cape York Peninsula, I'm thinking, looking at the back of the car. So, if you want to contact that guy, take a screenshot of that there, and uh, you've got his contact details now. And thanks mate, too much. What else is in here? We haven't finished opening this yet. Oh yes, happy days. How did he know that my hat was rooted? And look how many I've got. We'll put that on there. Three and a 
a couple of hats to give away to young fellas that are going out with me. Check it out. That's a neat hat, mate. I love your logo on the front. That's wicked. It's got a wee tree and it's got a uh, dog baiting up a pig underneath it. Very well made. And this one's a slightly different one. Like to the one I've got on. I know there's this one here and then there's the one that's fully camo. Like that. And this one here. They're all a little bit different, eh? Each, each one is actually a little bit different. There's one plain in the front. And he's done that to show up his, his, his name of his company. But the other one has a logo. That's an awesome gift, bro. And, you know, I'm always needing this sort of thing for young fellows I'm taking out. So, thank you very, very much. Serious good bastard. I'm very, very grateful. Right, eh? What I do need is I need a separate unit because I've only got um, one, so I'm always like radioing the boys where the uh, the dogs are on that, and it'll be great to give them another one. So that is on the list of things. Right, this here came from Bang Good Network Technology Co. Limited in China. I need my little knife. I think it is what I asked for, which is a survival kit. I saw these survival kits are around 20 bucks New Zealand and I thought that is good value for money. Yeah, this is the one. Make sure there's nothing in there. No card. That's rubbish. In the description box below I'll stick a link where you can buy this. From my understanding, it's less than 20 bucks online. Uh, and that includes the freight. And if I'm wrong on that, I will correct it later on. A couple of stickers from these guys. It's a nice little box, isn't it? Check that out. So it's got these two little catches, I guess, on each side. Can I open it? Oh no, it's got six. Uh, one, two, four, and a wee hinge. That is for a Shanghai or a slingshot. Got a couple of tools there. It's got a bottle opener on it. I'm not sure what that does in that angle, but I'll explore that. And ah, oh, okay, fire starter. I'm thinking. Is it gonna make a spark? Is that what it is? Yes, it is. A must-have for starting your fire. I've just taken a little bit off it. That's good value. A tiny compass. A little bit compass. I've got a lot of metal around me right now. I'm going to test it anyway. I know exactly where due west is and where's it pointing now? Straight out there and that is exactly where west is right now. So even with all this metal around that is working. That's impressive. That's shot for, this, for the slingshot I'm guessing. Got a little torch. I don't think it's going to have batteries in it. No it hasn't. Okay, battery goes in here. Okay, so that takes three triple A's. Very handy little torch. One thing I always say when I'm going away in the bush, folks, from a survival point of view and just a safety point of view, always take two forms of light, like two torches. You can never have too much. If one craps out, you can get really stuffed. Okay. This is for the Shanghai, I guess. And I'm thinking that this just slides up into here like this, is that right? Yep. Put your... Perfect. So put your... I would recommend using a 3.8 ball bearing. These are a bit small for a rabbit. So you could easily get 3.8 ball bearings. You could possibly take out a squirrel or a rat with that, but for a rabbit you want a bit bigger. If I can kill a rabbit with this, then this is a, a must-have for something extra to take with you for a food source. Feeling the uh, power of that? I'd be pretty confident it could. I used to shoot rabbits all the time with my slingshot when I was a kid, and it was actually a food source for me back then, so I'm pretty good with one of these still, so I'm going to test this at some stage and get back to you with an honest report on how it went. So what else is in our kit? Our fire starter. So far we've got a 
a compass, a shanghai, that's for a key ring. So there's another form of light already, plus that one. Like I said, you can never have too much of that. What have we got here? I'm guessing, is it a whistle? Is it a whistle? It's a bloody loud whistle. I can whistle pretty loud, like But I reckon that's nearly as loud. It's putting out a hell of a volume. If you're not a loud whistler, they'll be handy to have. If you're in an emergency situation and you're in the scrub, it's always three whistles. And if you're lost and you've got your rifle with you, it's three gunshots in a row. That's the rule. What else we got here? Oh yeah, more ammunition for the Shanghai. And last, this is a, a pen. It doesn't look like any normal pen though, check that out. It's a serious bit of kit. Just gonna find something to write on here. We'll write on the back of Hamish's letter. Perfect. Just uh, exploring it, having a look what's in here. So it's a refill pen. It's an awesome pen. I love it. It's real heavy. I'm not quite sure why it's sharp on the scene and what that's for. Making a hole in something? I don't know. I'll do some research. This is a really awesome wee kit from Banggood Technologies. And I'm grateful for giving it. Thank you very much, Cindy. Like I said, if you want to order one, I'll put a link below in my description box. Because it would be a great gift for somebody. I will do a test on this and make sure it can actually kill something. It has to be able to kill a rabbit to be functional. Nice little torch and some ammo. You know, taking these things out of the box is always easy. Putting them all back in, never quite so the same. But I think it's all going to fit in there. Here we go. Right, I've got a bit of Q&A. From a few people that wrote to me asking different stuff. Jaden in Invercargill wrote to me, Clay, I've watched all of your videos. I want to know what's the most painful thing that's ever happened to you on the scrub. And when he wrote that to me, it got me thinking about that. And uh, there's been quite a few things that have really hurt. Six years ago, I destroyed my rotator cuff, the whole top infospin artery, so I tore it uh, two thirds off. And I'd just been running down towards a bale to a pig, and I had so much adrenaline on me, I didn't even know I'd damaged myself. Yet the amount of pain that's caused me since that accident is ongoing, but at the time didn't hurt, so that doesn't qualify, but it still hurts today. I've got a, um, a few injuries that still hurt today. But the biggest and most painful one would have to be being stung by a swarm of wasps. It was about eight, nine years ago, and my mate was in front of me, we're going through the bush, and he tripped the hive, and he got no stings at all. The dogs had a pig down the gully, and then next minute I had wasps all over my face and all down my leg. So I got around 15 to 20 to the inside of my leg, right up to the old fella, and for two weeks it felt like I was still being stung. And for about three weeks I looked like I was really big down there, if you know what I mean. Like, way bigger than usual, totally unusable and totally in pain and inflamed. I've still got all these scars on one side, my whole head was swollen right up on one side. That was painful. But there's been uh, quite a few things that have been physically painful. Uh, getting knocked over by a boar and getting my shin smacked um, didn't hurt at all, yet it was one of the probably most sort of uh, dramatic sort of accidents that happened, but I haven't even broken any bones that I can remember. Well, I've been hunting and considering how many falls I've had, I've been pretty pretty blessed, so yeah. Uh, another question I got asked was by, I think it was Simon, and he's on my Patreon, so this is not a public question, but he asked it, and I thought it was a relative question to ask. He said, I've noticed lately in your videos you're not showing the actual part of killing the pig, sticking it with a knife. Is that because of the pressure from social media like YouTube or um, people in general? or your subscribers, are they actually saying they don't want to see that? And it's actually none of those reasons at all. I've generally always shown it, but my father, John, he said to me, stop showing the killing part, no one wants to see it. I thought about that, and um, I mean, my father's killed, he's 
he's been a culler. He's was a hunter, one of the first hunters in New Zealand. Uh, pig hunting with dogs, like back in the um, in, in Nelson here when he was, there was only like a handful of people doing it. So he's been doing it forever, and he, he's not scared of seeing a pig get stuck himself. So it wasn't for his own sake. He's just saying the general public don't want to see that part of it. Uh, to hunters, a lot of hunters are actually interested in seeing that part because they're interested to see how quickly you dispatch the pig, how fast it went down. But I listen to my dad, I respect my father, I respect his ideas and his thoughts, so I just thought I'd listen to my dad and cut that bit out. For better or for worse, I've cut it out of my videos. That's pretty much it. Uh, a massive thank you. I've got a whole lot of names to write up in the Good Bastards board, which I'm yet to do. Don't have time today. After I've thoroughly tested everything in this little black box, I will get back to you and let you know how it went. I'll do a review. Particularly the Shanghai. I'll let you know if it actually killed something or not. What else? Well, just a massive thank you to everyone who's given to this. A massive thank you to all my patrons that have continued to support me because without you guys, I wouldn't be making videos anymore. It's your contributions that keep this thing rolling over now. A massive thank you to everybody that's helping people in their own community. So if that means if you're taking someone out fishing or hunting that hasn't got a dad or an older person, then good on you for stepping up and making their world a little brighter. Plus it'll be making you feel a whole lot better about you too. Good luck with your own hunting, your own fishing, and uh, be good. If you can't be good, be careful. See you later.